At a safe distance from the palace, Ebube revealed the queen's intention to Adani, urging her to flee the community before it was too late. Adani's heart raced with fear as she realized the dangers she was in. With tearful goodbyes, Adani and Ebube parted ways, each facing an uncertain future. Adane embarked on a journey into the unknown, determined to escape the queen's wrath and protect her unborn child at all costs. Once upon a time, in a small village called Akbo, in the eastern part of Nigeria, there lived a young girl named Adane. She lived happily with her parents in their cozy home. Adane was a cheerful girl, always helping her parents with chores around the house and playing with her friends in the village. But one fateful night, when Adane was just 17 years old, tragedy struck. Her parents both passed away in their sleep, leaving Adane all alone in their home. Adane was heartbroken. She cried and felt lost, not knowing what to do or where to go. Days turned into weeks, and Adane lived in the lonely house, feeling sad and abandoned. One day, Adane's friend, Ebube, came to visit her. Ebube was a kind and caring girl who couldn't bear to see Adane suffering. She told Adane about a job opportunity at the king's palace and urged her to come along and try out for the position of a maid. At first, Adane was hesitant. She didn't know if she was capable of working in the king's palace and she was afraid of leaving the comfort of her home. But Ebube reassured her, saying, that it would be better than living alone in a lonely house. After much persuasion, Adane finally agreed to accompany Ebube to the selection for the king's maids. They arrived at the palace along with many other maidens from the village. King Nzopota and his wife, Queen Onugo, came out to address the maidens. They explained that they were looking for capable young women to serve in the palace and assist them with virus tasks. The maidens were put through different tests, including cooking, cleaning, and interviews. Adane and Ebube did their best, hoping to impress the king and queen. After the tests were completed, five maidens were selected, and to Adane's delight, both she and Ebube were among the chosen ones. They couldn't contain their joy as they were given their uniforms and welcomed into the palace. Adane and Ebube moved into the palace and began their new lives as maids to the king and queen. They worked hard, serving their royal masters with dedication and loyalty. As they settled into their new roles, Adane and Ebube formed a strong bond with each other and with the other maidens in the palace. They found happiness and purpose in their work, grateful for the opportunity to start afresh in the king's palace. Little did they know, their journey was just beginning and many adventures awaited them in the royal court. But for now, Adane and Ebube were content knowing that they had found a new family and a place to call a home. Adane and Ibube were overjoyed with their new jobs in the palace. They smiled at everyone they met, spreading happiness wherever they went. People often mistook them for twins because they were always together, sharing laughs and gossip in their shared room. Adane felt a sense of belonging in the palace, and being there helped her heal from the loss of her parents. She threw herself into her work, eager to please the king and queen in any way she could. 
Soon, Queen Onugu noticed Adane's dedication and I appointed her as her personal maid. Adane was thrilled to serve the queen directly, bringing her food, drinks, and ensuring the royal chambers were always tidy. The queen trusted Adane's implicitly, entrusting her with important tasks and valuables. Adane was grateful for the queen's trust and served her with all her heart. However, jealousy reared its ugly head in the form of another maid named Egod. Egod was older than Adane and felt envious of the attention the queen showered on her, hatched a devious plan to get rid of Adane. One day, when Adane was busy attending to her duties, Egudi sneaked into her room and planted the queen's expensive jewelry in Adane's bag. Unknown to Egudi, Egudi was hiding in the bathroom and witnessed the entire scene. After Egudi left, Egudi emerged from her hiding place and discovered the stolen jewelry in Adane's bag. Egudi decided to take matters into her own hands. She rushed to the king's chambers and confronted Adane as she emerged. Handing her the jewelry, Ebube urged Adane to return it immediately. Adane was bewildered, but followed Ebube's instructions. Later that day, Adane approached Ebube, demanding an explanation for her strange behavior earlier. Ebube hesitated, but eventually confessed to everything she had witnessed. Adane was stunned to learn that Egodi had framed her. I can't believe Egodi would do such a thing. Adane exclaimed, feeling betrayed by someone she had considered a friend. It's true, Adane. She was jealous of you and wanted to take your place as the queen's favorite. Ebube explained. Adane's mind raced as she tried to make sense of the situation. She couldn't fathom why Egodi would stoop so low to harm her. We need to tell the queen, Adane said, determination flashing in her eyes. She needs to know the truth. Ebube nodded in agreement. Knowing they had to act quickly to clear Adane's name and expose Egodi's treachery. Together, they approached Queen Onugo and told her everything that had transpired. The queen listened attentively, her expression growing grave as she realized the extent of Egodi's betrayal. I trusted Egodi, but it seems I was wrong, the queen said sadly. Thank you, Adane and Ibube, for bringing this to my attention. I will deal with Egodi accordingly. True to her word, the queen summoned Egodi and confronted her with the evidence. Unable to deny her guilt, Egodi confessed to her wrongdoing and was dismissed from her position in the palace. With Egodi gone, peace was restored to the palace, and Adane could continue her work without fear of sabotage. She was grateful for Ebube's loyalty and friendship, knowing she could always count on her in times of trouble. As they returned to their duties, Adane couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. She had overcome adversity and emerged stronger than ever, proving that kindness and honesty always triumph in the end. And with Ebube by her side, she knew she could face whatever challenges lay ahead. Adane and Ebube continued their hard work in the palace striving to fulfill their duties with diligence and dedication. They swept floors, polished silverware, and attended to the needs of the royal family with care. One day, Queen Onugo announced that she would be traveling out of the country, leaving her most cherished valuables in Adane's care. The queen entrusted Adane with this important task, knowing she could rely on her to keep everything safe. 
Adane promised to look after the queen's belongings with utmost care as the maids bid her farewell. However, that night, when Adane went to deliver tea to the king's chamber, a terrible thing happened. The king, taking advantage of Adane's innocence, forced her into a terrible secret. He made her swear never to tell anyone about what had happened. Adane was devastated and felt trapped, unable to speak out against the powerful king. As days passed, Ebube noticed a change in her friend. Adane was no longer as lively and cheerful as she used to be. Consigned, Ebube confronted her, asking if everything was all right. Adane, unable to confide in her friend, simply nodded and assured her that everything was fine. But Ebube knew better. She could see the pain and sadness in Adane's eyes and she vowed to find out what was troubling her friend. Meanwhile, Queen Onogo returned from her journey and immediately noticed the change in Adane's demeanor. Worried about her beloved maid, the queen summoned Adane to her chambers and gently urged her to share her troubles. Adane, unable to bear the weight of her secret any longer, broke down in tears. She didn't go into details, only mentioning the memory of her deceased parents as the cause of her sadness. The queen, moved by Adane's tears, wrapped her in a comforting embrace and assured her that she would always be there for her. She showered Adane with gifts she had brought from her journey, hoping to lift her spirits. Adane accepted the queen's gifts gratefully but her heart was heavy with guilt and fear. She knew she couldn't keep the king's secret forever, but she was terrified of the consequences of speaking out. As Adane left the queen's chambers, the queen watched her go with a mixture of concern and suspicion. She knew there was more to Adane's sadness than she was letting on, and she resolved to uncover the truth. Adane continued to carry out her duties in the palace, but her nerves were always on edge whenever she encountered the king or queen. The weight of her secret weighed heavily on her, and she lived in constant fear of being discovered. One day, Osinachi, a maiden who shared a room with Adane and Ebube, noticed Adane vomiting in the bathroom, consigned she asked Adane what was wrong. Adane tried to brush it off, saying it was just a stomach ache from something she ate. But Osinachi wasn't convinced. She says that something was amiss and decided to investigate further. That night, when Adane was sick again, Ebube was there to witness it. Unable to hide the truth any longer, Adane tearfully confessed to her friend that she was pregnant with the king's child and he had taken advantage of her. Ebube was shocked and devastated by the revelation. She hugged her friend tightly as they both cried, unaware that Osinachi had overheard everything. The next day, Osinachi went straight to the queen and revealed Adane's secret. The queen Furious at the betrayer, summoned Adane and demanded to know if she was pregnant. Adane, taken aback by the accusation, was silent, unable to comprehend how her friend could betray her trust. In a fit of rage, the queen slapped Adane, demanding that she speak the truth. Adane, frightened and cornered, admitted to her pregnancy knowing that the consequences would be severe. The queen, outraged by Adane's betrayer, locked her up and concocted a plan to get rid herself of the problem once and for all. She forcefully administered a portion to Adane 
hoping to terminate the pregnancy and ordered her to return to her duties as if nothing had happened. Adane, weakened by the portion, returned to her room where Ebube anxiously awaited her. Unable to keep up the printers any longer, Adane collapsed in tears, revealing everything to her friend. Days passed, and despite the queen's efforts, Adane remained pregnant. Angered by her failure, the queen resolved to eliminate Adane instead. Ebube overheard the queen's sinister plan and knew she had to act fast to save her friend. In a daring rescue, she packed Adani's belongings and secretly led her out of the palace under the cover of night. At a safe distance from the palace, Ebube revealed the queen's intention to Adani, urging her to flee the community before it was too late. Adani's heart raced with fear as she realized the dangers she was in. With tearful goodbyes, Adane and Ebube parted ways, each facing an uncertain future. Adane embarked on a journey into the unknown, determined to escape the queen's wrath and protect her unborn child at all costs. Adane wandered through the night, her heart heavy with fear and uncertainty. She stumbled upon a secluded road and decided to rest there until morning. The shadows provided some comfort as she drifted off to sleep, her mind filled with worries about her future. Meanwhile, back at the palace, the queen was convinced that Adane was still within her grasp. She continued to scheme and plot, determined to rid herself of the problem that Adane posed. The next morning, Adane found herself at a park, unsure of where she was or where she was going. She boarded a bus without a destination in mind, simply hoping to put some distance between herself and the dangers of the palace. As the bus rumbled along, Adane watched the passing scenery with a mixture of apprehension and curiosity. Eventually, the bus reached a town and Adane disembarked. Her senses alert for any sign of danger. She wandered through the unfamiliar streets until she stumbled upon an uncompleted building. Exhausted and weary, she decided to take shelter there, hoping to find some respite from the troubles that pursued her. Meanwhile, back at the palace, the queen's anger grew as she realized that Adane had escaped her clutches. She summoned Ebube and demanded to know the whereabouts of her friend. Ebube torn between loyalty to her friend and fear of the queen's wrath, lied and claimed that Adane had disappeared while she was asleep. But the queen saw through her deception and ordered the guards to punish Ebube for her betrayal. The guards showed Ebube no mercy. Tying her up and subjecting her to a brutal beating at the queen's command. Ebube cried out in pain and begged for mercy. But the queen remained unmoved, determined to extract the truth from her. Just when it seemed that Ebube would endure further punishment, the king intervened, ordering the guards to stop. He was troubled by the queen's cruelty towards Ebube and questioned her motives. Later that day, Ebube, bruised and broken, was cast out of the palace by the queen's order. She returned to her family, determined to build her life despite the hardships she faced. Meanwhile, tension between the king and queen escalated as the truth about Adani's pregnancy came to light. The king, wrecked with guilt and anger, confronted the queen for withholding such important information from him. The queen, ashamed of her deceit, could offer no excuses. She watched helplessly as the rift between her and the king widened. Knowing that her actions had damaged their relationship, as life in the palace became increasingly tumultuous, Adane struggled to survive 
in the harsh world outside its walls. But she remained determined to protect her unborn child. And as the sun set on another day, the fate of Adane, the king, and the queen remained uncertain. Their lives intertwined by secrets, lies, and betrayal. Adane continued to hustle on the busy streets, selling fruits under the scorching sun. Despite the challenges she faced, she remained resilient and hardworking, determined to provide for herself and her unborn child. One day, while on her usual route, Adane encountered a kind-hearted man named Sunday. Sunday ran a provision store and was quick to offer Adane assistance whenever she needed it. Despite her initial reluctance to share her living situation, Adane soon warmed up to Sunday, grateful for his friendship and support. As the days passed, Adane found solace in Sunday's company, often seeking refuge in his store after a long day of hawking. Their friendship blossomed, and Sunday became a constant source of encouragement and help to Adane. When Adane went into labor, Sunday was there by her side, offering his assistance and support. Together, they gathered enough money for the delivery. And Adane gave birth to a beautiful baby boy whom she named Nzopotam. It was then that Sunday learned of Adane's living situation and he was deeply moved by her resilience and determination. He pleaded with her to move in with him, offering her and her son a safe and comfortable home. After much consideration, Adane agreed, grateful for the opportunity to provide a better life for herself and her son. She moved into Sunday's one-room apartment, and together they formed a makeshift family, bound by love and mutual support. Despite the challenges they faced, Adane and Sunday worked tirelessly to provide for baby Nzopotam. They shared the joys and struggles of parenthood, finding strength in each other's presence. Adane felt a sense of happiness and contentment she hadn't experienced in a long time, and she thanked Sunday for his unwavering kindness and generosity. Together, they faced life's challenges with courage and determination, finding happiness in the simple moments they shared as a family. And as they embraced newfound life together, Adane knew that with Sunday by her side, they could overcome anything that came their way. Baby Zopotam grew quickly, becoming a handsome and cheerful six months old. Adane, still dedicated to providing for her son, prepared to go hawking as usual, with little Zopotam strapped to her back. However, Sunday, seeing her off, insisted that he would take care of Zopotam at the store allowing Adane to pick him up after her work was done. Grateful for his help, Adane kissed her baby goodbye and headed out to sell her fruits. At the store, Sunday dotted on little Nzopotam, playing with him and feeding him with tender care. Time passed quickly, but suddenly, a group of boys rushed to Sunday, breathless and alarmed. They told him that Adane had been hit by a car. Without a moment's hesitation, Sunday scooped up Nzopotam and raced to the scene of the accident. His heart sank as he realized that Adani was already gone. Tears streamed down his face as he cradled Nzopotam in his arms, the weight of his loss crushing him. The community rallied around Sunday, offering their condolences and support during this difficult time. Adane was laid to rest, her memory forever cherished by those who knew and loved her. Despite his grief, Sunday knew he had to be strong for Nzopotam. Taking on the roles of both mother and father, Sunday devoted himself to ensuring that Nzopotam lacked nothing. As Nzopotam grew, 
he began attending nursery school. His bright smile and playful demeanor bringing joy to all who knew him. Soon they watched with pride as Nsoptan flourished, entering high school as a diligent and intelligent young man. He showered Nsoptan with love and affection, treating him as his own son and cherishing every moment they spent together. Although Sunday often spoke of Adane, he kept the truth about her relationship a secret. Waiting for the right moment to reveal the truth to Nzopotam. In the meantime, they shared a bond that transcended blood ties, their love for each other enduring through all of life's challenges. As they faced the ups and downs of life together, Sunday knew that he would do anything to ensure Nzopotam's happiness and success. And as they looked towards the future, he held on to the hope that one day, he would find the courage to share the truth with his beloved son. As Uzo Potam proudly graduated from the university, he returned home to his father, Sunday, dressed in the distinctive NYSE uniform. Sunday welcomed him with open arms, embracing his son tightly and expressing his pride and joy at Uzo Potam's accomplishments. Uzo Potam, in turn, expressed his gratitude to Sunday for his unwavering love, care, and support throughout the years. They shared a meal together, basking in the warmth of their bond and the happiness of the moment. Sunday watched with pride as Nzopotam ate his favorite meal, his heart overflowing with love for his son. However, as days passed, Soon they found himself wrestling with the weight of a long-held secret. He knew that it was time to reveal the truth to Nzopotam about his parentage. With a heavy heart and trembling hands, Soon they summoned the courage to sit down with Nzopotam and share the truth. He began by assuring Nzopotam that whatever he was about to hear was for his own good and shouldn't bring him sadness. Nzopotam nodded. His curiosity peaked as Sunday started to recount the story of how he met Adane. Pregnant and alone, he spoke of their friendship, of the tragedy of Adane's death, and finally, he revealed the truth that he was not Nzopotam's biological father. Nzopotam listened in stunned silence, tears welling in his eyes, as Sunday shared the identity of his true father and the circumstances of his mother's escape from the palace. Overwhelmed by emotion, Nzopotam reached out and embraced Sunday, expressing his gratitude for being the best father he could have ever asked for. He was surprised to learn that Sunday had never married Adane, even after her death, and he thanked him for his selflessness and devotion. Nzopotam promised to love and cherish Sunday for the rest of his days, grateful for the love and care he had received. Filled with a sense of purpose, Sunday told Nzopotam of his plan to travel to the village and seek out Nzopotam's father, the king. Nzopotam hesitated at first, unsure of what he would find, but he agreed to accompany Sunday, wanting to honor his father's wishes and support him on his journey of discovery. And so, father and son set out together, bound by love and the promise of a new chapter in their lives. As they embarked on their journey, son they felt a sense of fulfillment and purpose, knowing that he had finally revealed the truth to Nzopotam and paved the way for a future filled with hope and possibility. Sunday and Nzopotam embarked on their journey to the village of Akbo, the place where Nzopotam's true identity would be revealed. Upon their arrival at the palace, they were granted an audience with King Nzopotam, who listened intently as Sunday recounted their story and presented Nzopotam as his son. The king, initially shocked by the revelation, called for the royal doctor to conduct a DNA test to confirm Nzopotam's lineage. As the result came back positive, 
confirming Nzapotam's paternity. The king's heart swelled with joy and pride. He embraced his long-lost son, welcoming him back into the royal family with open arms. Meanwhile, in the palace, Prince Udoka, the queen's son, seated with anger at the thought of losing his position as the heir to the throne. He resented Nzapotam's sudden reappearance and feared that his own chances of becoming king were now threatened. The queen, equally distressed by the turn of events, regretted not eliminating Adane when she had the chance. Determined to secure her son's future, she assured Udoka that they would find a way to remove Nzopotam from the picture once and for all. After Nzopotam had settled into the palace life and bonded with his newfound family, son they bid his son farewell, promising to always be there for him no matter what. Tears flowed freely as they embraced, their bonds stronger than ever before. As Nzopotam began to familiarize himself with palace affairs, and accompany his father, the king, on his duties. Tension simmered between him and Prince Udoka. Udoka resented Nzopotam's presence and constantly threatened him, eager to reclaim his position as heir to the throne. One fateful day, the queen devised a sinister plan to rid herself of Nzopotam once and for all. She poisoned Nzopotam's food. However, Nzopotam was delayed in coming to the dining room, and in a tragic turn of events, the king unknowingly consumed the poisoned meal and died. The queen, devastated by her unintended actions, accused Nzopotam of poisoning the king and had him arrested. However, the elders of the village intervened, insisting that Nzopotam be released as he was the rightful heir to the throne in the absence of the king. With Nzopotam's release, Tensions escalated between him and Prince Udoka, who continued to harbor resentment towards his newfound brother. The palace became a battleground as the two brothers clashed over their claim to the throne, with Udoka resorting to threats and violence in his bid to secure his position. In a desperate attempt to eliminate Nzopotam, the queen orchestrated an assassination plot intending to have him killed on his way out of the palace. However, her plan backfired when Udoka, unaware of his mother's scheme, fell victim to the assassins instead. As news of Udoka's death spread throughout the palace, the queen was consumed by guilt and remorse. She confessed her crimes, admitting to her role in both the king's and Udoka's deaths, and was subsequently banished from the village as punishment for her atrocities. The villagers mourned the loss of Udoka and condemned the queen for her treachery. Why Nzopotam, though saddened by the turn of events, remained steadfast in his resolve to honor his father's legacy and rule with compassion and fairness. And so, with the queen's reign of terror finally at an end, Nzopotam ascended the throne as the rightful king determined to lead his people with wisdom, integrity, and justice. Nzopotam, now the king of Akbo Kingdom, summoned his father, Sunday, to join him at the palace. Sunday eagerly accepted the invitation, ready to support his son in his new role as a king. One day, a woman arrived at the palace with her 22-year-old daughter. She introduced herself as a booby, Adane's best friend. Sunday immediately recognized her from the pictures Adane had shown him when she was alive. They shared stories of their past together, reminiscing about Adane and the bond they shared. Ebube, now married with children of her own, expressed her happiness that the baby she once knew in Adane's womb had grown into the great king of their land. She embraced Nsopotam warmly thanking Sunday for all he had done for him over the years. They celebrated their reunion with joy and laughter, grateful for the chance to reminisce about old times and celebrate Nzopotam's accomplishments. As time passed, 
Nzopotam found himself drawn to Ebube's daughter, Kamsi. They fell in love and eventually got married. Much to the delight of their families, Ebube was overjoyed to see the bond between her daughter and Nzopotam, knowing that the relationship she had shared with Adane had now extended to their children. With Nzopotam and Kamsi ruling the kingdom together, Akbo flourished under their wise and just leadership. The people were happy and prosperous, and so they couldn't have been prouder of his son and daughter-in-law. Together, they ruled with compassion and integrity, always putting the needs of their people first. And as they looked forward to the future, they knew that they would continue to lead their kingdom with love and dedication, ensuring that Akbo remained a place of peace and prosperity for generations to come. As soon they looked upon his son and his new family, he couldn't help but feel a sense of fulfillment and pride. He had played a part in shaping the destiny of Akbo, and seeing Nzopotam and Kamsi ruling side by side filled him with joy. And so, with their heart full of love and gratitude, Nzopotam, Kamsi and Sunday celebrated their newfound happiness, knowing that they would continue to cherish each other and the kingdom they called home for many years to come. And as they lived out their days in peace and prosperity, they knew that they would always be bound together by the bonds of family and love. The lesson we learn from this story is that family is not just about who you are related to by blood, but also about the love and support you give and receive. In the story, Sunday may not have been Nzopotam's biological father, but he loved and cared for him, just like a real father would. Similarly, Ebube may not have been Nzopotam's mother, but her friendship with Adane extended to her daughter Kamsi, who became Nzopotam's wife. This teaches us that family can be made up of people who love and care for each other, even if they are not related by blood. It shows us the importance of kindness, friendship, and acceptance in building strong and loving relationships. No matter where we come from or who our parents are, what matters most is the love and support we give and receive from those around us. And when we treat others with kindness and respect, we can create a family that is based on love and understanding, making us all happier and stronger together. Thank you for watching this amazing story on African Stories. If you liked it and felt inspired, please show your support by clicking the like button, sharing with your friends, and leaving a comment below. To see more interesting stories and learn more about African cultures, subscribe to African Stories and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss a new story. Your support means a lot and helps us bring more stories to you. Until we meet again, stay connected, stay inspired, and keep smiling.